How do? Better know. late than never, as we say. So, uh, <laughs> so today I'm going to do a question and answer. This lad here is an ex Scooby Doo, XR2. Do you know what an XR2 is? Like it, no, it was a Ford Car Fiesta. Ford, yeah. Ford Fiesta. So when I was at Forest Bank, XR2s we were. Right. Rhyming slang is an ex-prison custody officer. That's private sector prison officer. Uh, same job. Used to be less staff and less pay now. Pretty much a level playing field, private and public sector. Question and answer today. Then we're going to do a a full interview um, later on. Right. How old were you when you started the job? I was 18. 18. 18 years old? Yeah. Going for a job, private prisons as a prison officer, is that too young? Um, I don't think you can like pigeonhole everyone. I think people grow up like different sort of levels. I mean, I grew up in a bit of a, a rough area, so I saw a fair bit. Yeah. I'd done a lot of sport, a lot of martial arts, so I had a little bit about me physically and things like that. Does so, that not just give you the confidence? Maybe, um, do you think? I don't know. I mean, my instructor is, is, is not with us anymore, but he was, you know, doorman, he, you know, did close protection, did a lot of stuff, and he had a lot about him, so he obviously didn't just teach me. Did you work the doors? No, no. I've done a lot of shift or two here and there, but never nothing like substantive work for me. So you had a bit about you? Yeah. In general, yeah, I remember when I was 18, definitely would have not been up for that job. Uh, in general, do you think it's too young? I would say so, yeah, yeah. Well, it was 21 for years, weren't it? it used, it used 21, to to 21, then it was 20, then he made it 18. Um, why do you think there are only young people, and mostly lasses, females, going for that job? It's a recruitment. I think the, rec the recruitment's a bit of a joke. I think if it was a bit more robust, you'd have more people in it, but it's... The, the, the money, the hours, you know, like specifically for me, obviously worked in a, a prison in Nottingham. Yep. They had a, an agreement with the universities to take students on who were doing um, criminology to give them a year's placement, do a as, year. And as, they, as a, as as a prison officer. officer. Yeah, yeah. And they were all young lasses. Well, that 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 dumb. <laughs> that dumb. I met one who was really good. I think I think he's a copper now. Okay. He was he was a good lad. Yeah. Um, I think he's a couple of years older than me, and out of the God knows how many that coming, he was one that was sad. All the others were just so. <laughs> we, we basically take people on for twelve months, pay them a wage, they're and, not then, and be... then offer them bank after twelve months, so they can come back whenever they want, as long as it don't interfere with like the uni studies. Did they have bank work? Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kidding loads, me. mate. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bank work, for those that don't know, uh, basically the people who are not full-time employees and they come in and do bank shifts when you're short. We used to use it like a lot of um, escorts were just done by bank staff. So so the easy jobs? Pretty much, yeah. Or like key, doing key worker all day. <laughs> how, how, long, how long did you do the job for? About five years. Five years. Started in April 2016 and left in June 21. Was that start of lockdown or were you a year into lockdown? A year in, or, yeah, yeah. What was lockdown like? Did things change? At the start, it was <clears throat> it was a nightmare. Um, just the, the regime that they put in was was ridiculous. Um, Explain what the regime was before uh, lockdown came around. So, so we locked up at eight o'clock. Yep. Um, so what we would do is we'd do evening meal, say six. Lock them up for like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. Do a roll, go back, put the roll in, then unlock for association. And obviously throughout the day, they'd go to work, they'd go to the gym. So there'd be a work move in the morning, yep. work move in the afternoon. And then we sort of did sort of like two or three gym moves throughout the day. Obviously education would be on. And then all of a sudden that all just stopped. Completely stopped. You, you know, people are locked up. The first regime that was happening, I think it was like, you get, I don't think they were coming out for a bit, for a few days. And then you get it where you do like, so so on the housing, so two three house blocks at the jail I worked at, they had showers in the cells, but yep. two didn't. Yep. So there was eight showers on the landing, four downstairs, four upstairs. Yep. And what you would do is you'd unlock eight prisoners yep. for 15 minutes. 
they'd get a shower, they'd get on the ATM, like, you know, so if, sort if of they wanted to do whatever. anything, a little computer yeah. terminal, yeah. Fill the water up, that's yep. it, behind the door, unlock another eight. But between that, we'd, we'd have to scrub the showers down, everything like that. And, and that was it for weeks, months, 15 minutes out of so. What, what about meals? Did they come out fed, and collect fed the meals? behind the door. They were fed we, behind yeah, the yeah. door, really? We used to feed them behind the door, yeah. What about exercise? Uh, I think at the start, I don't think there was a great deal. And then they, they had have like half an hour out on the yard a day, if I can remember, it was quite a while ago. But I know they had sort of like 30 minutes, 45 minutes on the yard. So you don't like, like, what were they? It, we we tried to mirror the social distancing guidelines as possible. So like when it up, like when it went to like say you could be in a, a group of six people, yep. And then it went to like whatever it went to. So we, I think we sort of tried to mimic that. So it got to a point where you sort of look, unlocking like a quarter of the landing, letting them out in the yard, half an hour, bringing them back in, putting them behind the doors, getting another. It was tedious. It was tedious as fuck. Did you see? Uh Prior to lockdown, obviously, you said they were out more, more association and that. Staff prisoner relationships, my favourite, dynamic security. Yeah. During lockdown, did did it become more hostile? Did did it change? Yeah. Because, because what you're telling me, a shower a day and maybe some exercise, maybe an hour out a day, which is like old school, yeah. and that was pretty much all the prison service, weren't it? I know yeah. there were some prisons where lads locked up 72 hours yeah yeah and they would maybe get two showers a week and stuff like that um yeah yeah it was i mean prisoner on prisoner that was you know it's always been there that got bad because obviously everyone's frustrated and and locked up but it weren't necessarily like a a breakdown in dynamic security it was for sort of two years there yeah. was no moves so no one was progressing through so i mean we i went to cat b we was holding cat c prisoners cat d prisoners for 12 months plus because we couldn't move them anywhere you know you've got obviously they're only out for short periods of time yep. but you might have an issue between prisoners which normally you'd put like a nominal restriction in place and you'd separate them couldn't do that because right. we didn't have the space we couldn't be moving people around so we are pretty much full for yeah yeah pretty yeah. much i think it was that i think it was over capacity because i think i think at one point the the unit so we've got a, a unit that's on the one on the, the lower landing of one wing, I think that yeah. was full, which would typically only have a couple of prisons on there. I think the seg was full for the, the pretty much the whole time as well. Yep. So, what was the best <coughs> thing about about that job for you? What did you enjoy? Just the just the laugh. I think I'm a bit. You of a didn't know I'm going to ask you these. No, questions. no, no. I'm a bit of a people person. I like like okay th like problem solving. So for me, you know what it's like. People yeah. obviously that work in the job know what it's like. There's a lot of problems to solve, whether that be something really trivial like yeah. talking about money or, you know, can you put this phone number on or whatever. But then to like the bigger stuff like your mental health problems, you, you sort of interventions when you've got someone who's been a bit of a pain in the arse and just in that vicious cycle and you've got to go, look, come on. So you're same as me. Yeah. For me, all, all the interactions both with the, the people I work with and the prisoners was, you know, that's what I enjoyed. Yeah. yeah. Having people out chatting, loads yeah. of interactions all day long. So how did you find lockdown? Boring. Yeah, yeah. That that was the the thing for me. Well, I mean, I was well, I wanted to leave anyway, but it was during that lockdown period where I was like, right, you know, I'm gonna properly invest my time into to moving on. Um, yeah. Worst thing about the job for you? <laughs> Probably the staff, the management. Well, not all the staff, but okay. You know what I mean? Listen, look, I, <laughs> I'll just say it. I, it's, I mean, it's. Uh, I, I have my own problem. Yeah. Not all managers. No, no. You know, and not all staff, but you know what? What tends to happen is it's a recruit. It's, for me, it's a recruitment, and but it's like anywhere, you you take the wrong people on. <laughs> that it is what it is. I, you, you, there's no other way to put it. Is I think in the five years I worked there. 98% of the people that work there should have never had no business being in a jail. Working in a jail, maybe being locked up in one, but never working in one. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm not sitting here, I, I weren't the best best prison officer in the world. You know, I had my days where I just couldn't be arsed, so I'd be a bit ratty, but... Well, you get that in every job, yeah, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, So, on the management front, uh, just expand on that a little. Are you talking about you know people making poor decisions? Yeah. Managers not. Yeah. See, see like senior management just like bullying staff, 
sacking staff for no, for, well, obviously not for nothing, but you'd, you'd look at it and think, you know, that was a that was what, a what do you mean decision. bullying? I, I expand on that a little. Yeah, uh, moving people around. So if they didn't like someone, they just get the piss took out of them. So it was usually like female staff. Some like you've said before, some at best staff you were with females, yeah. and same for me. Definitely, you know, you, definitely. You, me and you can stand in front of some twenty stone unit, giving him what for, and he could just be giving us all the give fuck off. So you, you might have been put, giving him what for. Yeah, me, I, I, I'm the old bull. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you put, a, you know, you, you put a, a female into the mix, a different dynamic. Yeah, you know, very much so. You know, you, you get a female member of staff who couldn't be bullied. Who was good at the job? Yep, and they just take the piss out of them and just make up. You know what it's like. It, it's. I, I had a conversation with a lad I used to work with. Uh, he's still in the job now. For me, so working in engineering, yeah. I'm, I I got management positions, yeah. foremen. People look how you did the job. First, you could do the job. How you interact with people. Yeah, it's on, it's on You're right, Sam. It, yeah. yeah, thinking they're offering you a job as a foreman. What do you think? Yeah, and you get a job like that. Yeah. It was done on merit. There were loads of prison officers Jobs I worked with boys, isn't it? who were yeah. only ever going to be prison officers yeah. because one, they can't get through the the promotional yeah. bullshit that it is. You yeah. know, doing yeah. the role plays, doing the written stuff, yeah. Yeah. which is, you know, and I, ju I just find that really frustrating. But also, some of the worst people got promoted, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it is jobs for the boys yeah. and girls. Yeah, yeah. Which was annoying, and it, it's not like that in every, any other industry no. I've ever worked in. No. Um, the worst incident you were ever involved in, um, and why that was the worst incident? Well, obviously, I, we did a video before, didn't we? Whether we don't know what we're doing with that, and I explained yep. a bit on that. I was suspended yep. for use of force. It weren't the incident itself. Yep. That was obviously because it was, you know, just a restraint. It got a little bit heavy, you know, everyone was fighting, whatever. The aftermath of that, being suspended, going through the court process, that was the odd bit about that. But physically being involved in an incident, there was a, an incident um, on one of the landings where a prisoner had been locked up for something really, really trivial. And he was an IPP prisoner, way over tariff, so, you know, he's. Not in a good yeah, place. Yeah, not in probably. a good place anyway. And then uh don't unlock him, don't unlock him, don't unlock him, don't unlock him. The pin phone's phoned up. He spoke to I think his missus on the phone saying he's never gonna get out, he's gonna kill a little stabbing officer, well, I don't know the exact words. Yep. Uh but a couple of days later, puts his bell on asked a member of staff summit, she opens the door, he comes running out and stabbed an officer in the neck, in the face, in the head. Wow. All over the shop. Oh, here we go, we've got a visitor. How are you, chaps? All right. Don't feel like you've got to rush in. You all right? All right, mate, right, no worries. Yeah, you've got, you got your first two hours free anyway. All right, cheers, buddy. Right, mate, <laughs> Go on. Yeah, so that, that was... That was heavy. I think the, the guy had to be resuscitated, I think. Uh, he never worked again, pensioned off, never. Wow. And he was someone, and he... And this is what I'm saying about how it's run is he come up from another jail yep. just to see how, because they was having trouble, just to see how we was doing things. Because at that point in time, it was, you know, it was all right. You know, we had good staff and good experience yep. and everything like that, and the prisoners weren't too, you know, they, they, it, there was an us and them mentality. It, it, was, but it, was, it was good, you know what I mean? They knew. It was, it was a good, yeah, it had a good yeah, reputation, yeah, that Nick. Yeah, and you, and, you, and you know that. Um, and yeah, he, fuck, they just they just took the piss with him. You know, what I mean, I mean, he wouldn't have done anything anyway. But they never gave him the option. I, I don't think he had a radio. Didn't he have a baton? <laughs> I just let him walk him out. I don't know. He didn't work landings at the jail he come from. He worked in visits. So they just bunged him straight on the wing. And then you know, a couple of weeks into his, his succumbence, getting stabbed up. Can I, can I ask you? You know, how do you feel? Not not the incident. Obviously, you just got to react. Yeah. Do you think that the the staff were looked after? Have that must be traumatic. That people getting stabbed, that is uh, not every day. You you turn up on site, you know, <laughs> so debriefs, support for staff. Not not really, not really. I think the, the the guy that obviously got assaulted, he was looked after. Obviously, he's from down south, so they put him up up here. Yep. You know, sort of that. You know, he's ready and that, and you know, helped him. The. <sighs> The female, 
Yep. Then went on a bit of a tirade. Weren't the best officer in the world anyway. Yeah. Um, but you won't wish but, that on anyone. Uh, would no, you? no, no. And um, but it, it, it was more her behaviour afterwards. What I think put a, a sour taste in everyone's mouth, and I think that's why the, the sort of incident just went like yeah. by the by. And then it come to going to court, and he got like eighteen months. So somebody's come out of the cell, uh, and it was at, at, at just a point on the weapon. We, you know, talking about the yeah. severity of it. It uh, it was a spike, a metal spike off like a milk trolley, one okay. of the milk trolleys, and he'd wrapped a uh, whatever he'd wrapped round it as an handle. Yeah. As he was stabbing him, the spike fell through the bottom of the handle, and they'd said if it had stayed intact, it had killed, killed him. Because he'd have had like another injury or what? so, and he got what like, sentence? Like Eighteen months, something like that. But he's IPP anyway. Yeah. And then they wanted it to run concurrent. <laughs> So yeah, the, the, this is the thing you see. I saw something the other day that they've, they've, they've made, they've made it, they've, they've put the the tariff up or punishment for people who attack prison officers to two years or something. Yeah, because they they put it under the same thing as attacking a. However, if it runs concurrent, worker. yeah, yeah, it's but pathetic, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it should warrant the same. If somebody if somebody attacked you in the street it's or like, attacked, attacked, stabbed them up yeah. with a spike or something like that. Yeah. They're getting way more than two years, aren't they? Yeah. Or There's I would a, like to think there was, a, there was a guy that we had at the Nick for years, right? And I think, I'm going to, this is a guess, I'm, I'm pretty sure. He'd he done something like 70 assaults on staff. Okay. From kicking, biting, all of the above. Yep. Right. He went to your old Nick. Yep. Strange ways. And he, he finally went to court. I think they pretty much just tried to deal with them all at one time. Yeah. And he got some at like four or five years. For 70 incidents, 70 assaults, you're getting them like four or five years. But if I walked and punched someone in this car park now, they'd be, like, they'd be giving me oh, five, yeah, six yeah. years for one punch. Yeah. yeah, it could be. So, can I ask you something about this lad? So, the lad who's come out, there's intel to suggest that he's dangerous to yeah, staff. Yeah. Um, do you think it warranted moving him to the seg, or if you're full, you can't always do that, can you? Uh, and the other thing is, if I come onto your wing, yeah, and somebody says to me, "Go and unlock that person," I'm going to go and do that. I don't know who they are, do I? It, yeah, yeah. You know, it's very difficult to prepare. You know, you can't tell all the staff in the jail this prisoner who's behind his door has threatened to. Yeah. Because you get threatened every so what, day. So what did you, you? So in your experience, you know people that were on CC. Yeah. What would you do with them? Would they be in a sec? Right, CC guys, you cellular confinement. They aren't necessarily people who've done something, but potentially, you know, like that threatening staff. Right. Normally they'd be in the seg. Yeah. But you know, when I left the seg was always full. Yeah, yeah. However, again, you can only do so much because you get threatened every day. So yeah. if someone's making threats to you know, it's very hard to to protect staff. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, he, he was on. There was there was all sorts around it as well. I mean, he was on closed visits at the time. He had some. I think it was. I don't know if it was his probation. Someone coming to see him from outside, and yeah. he was on a closed visit and doing whatever they were doing. Or so he was on closed visits anyway. So there was enough there to go, just you know, block him off, even if it's just for a period of time, to see if we can just gauge his behaviour, see if he needs a change of a wick. Cause I know the wing he was on at the time was a bit. You know, it was one of them wings. It was. A bit tasty. Yep. Probably, probably at that point in time, one of the worst wings on the jail in the jail. Yep. But they just did nothing. Did you ever save anyone's life? Uh, yeah, yeah, a couple of people. Do you, do you want to expand on that a little? Uh, just because we, you know, we never, we always remember the bad stuff. Yeah. I'll talk about one, um, and th that was spice. Um, and there was me and a good mate of mine. He's not in a job anymore. Ex army. We give him CPR. Yeah. Um. Are you he, he unconscious? Dead, gone. Finished. Yeah. Done. Yeah. So um, one at Smoking nurse. Smoking spice. Yeah. One at nurse says you need to you need to keep working on him. So I think for probably about 30, 40 minutes we're just there on and off him. On and 40 off him. Forty minutes. On and off that him. That is a just long time. Not, we're not. We broke his uh, sternum, a couple of ribs. Uh, brought him back, you know, ambulance got there, we brought him back round. Yeah. My mate ended up going in the ambulance because they said, like, you know, you stay. Well, Oscar was like, you're doing a good job, they want you. You go with them, you run the landing. And, but that was it. So he just dead in front of me, Yeah. brought him back round, 
right, stand back up and start locking people. And that's what fucks a lot of people up. Yeah. But so... for me, with him, <laughs> about three or four weeks later, the wing we worked on, he was on the wing with the adjoining yard. Yeah. And he come out and start giving us shit. You've broke my fucking ribs and my chest and this, that, and the other. And we both turned around and went, he's like, what are my kids going to think? I went, well, tell your fucking kids, mate, that two prison officers saved your life. And in the Bro process, broke your ribs, ribs, broke your sternum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, yeah. Uh, sorry, mate. <laughs> right, so you, you've hit on something there. This is another thing that, that used to make incidents far more worse. So you've got a guy here. Been working on someone who's dead. I'll tell you what, that is quite traumatic in itself. You know, there aren't many, many roles in life. Obviously, paramedics yeah. and ambulance staff do this sort of stuff all the time. That doesn't detract from it. It still impacts them. However, that is the expectation, and that's the prison service throughout. Yep, you yeah. have just saved someone's life. You've been doing CPR. However, you're a prison officer, so just get on me a job now. Yeah. It's like, it's like lunchtime, so we used to try and move as, as people like plan removals yep. if it was like times where prisons were locked up. So we didn't want to start locking people up just so we could move people. Right. Again, <laughs> I'm laughing because <laughs> a planned removal. So you've got someone in a cell kicking off, threatening to do whatever, smashing a cell up. So what we're saying is, and I'm laughing because it... I've been in this situation a lot of times. Instead of dealing with that incident there and then, they might let it carry on for an hour and a half till it gets to dinner time and everyone's had their dinner and behind the door and then you deal with yeah. the incident. Yeah, but then we're like, as staff, <laughs> that's our time. When prisoners are locked up at lunch, that's our time to have 10 minutes, eat us lunch, you know, catch up with paperwork. But then the yep. three or four are you getting kitted up. And we used to have this one match, she's retired now, bless her, but she hated mess. So if we had like food, like prepared food or whatever, and it was it was on the off, it was in the desks in the in the in the bubble in the office, yeah. and then it was getting kitted up, I bet you a pound to a piece of shit, nine day, nine times out of ten, you go and do a plan removal. Please you come tell back, me your please food was in din. In bin. Do, do you know one thing that I used to hate? People messing about with my food. So again, this is your dinner time. Someone's throwing your food in bin. You're expected to catch up with paperwork in dinner time. You know, the, there is no breaks. You do need a break in that job. I think my last seven years, I could probably count how many proper breaks I had. But then with, with lockdown, so he, obviously each landing's got its own office. Yep. And they was promoting you to just be on landing all day. Just sit in office on your lunch break. Don't go into the bubble, obviously, because you couldn't. All being obviously, there was like a rule where you can have like two people. In Explain one what room the bubble is. The bubbles. So think of a X-shaped building, or just Google any prison in the country. Is it like a recreation area? Yeah, a it's just a, a main office sort of thing. So you have yep. um, desks, computers, printer, yep. lockers, things like that in there, yep. and it's just central to the ass block in between all the wings sort of one-way mirrors if you like on there yeah um and if you was a bit of a shit house and sitting in there all day you turn lights off so prisoners couldn't see through and see he was in there gear shit through window really? like what a lot of managers used to do is turn lights off and just sitting there all day well <laughs> you, you know the, the best managers were proactive yeah. so they'd be oh, on a wing managers, they'd be on a wing yeah. the wing manager would be on a wing so people could ask him questions didn't have wing about and they know didn't have wing managers well i mean like <laughs> a po like a po or yeah whatever. yeah that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. However, a lot were conspicuous by their absence. Yes, mate. Yeah. So, did you enjoy your six years, five years? Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what the thing is with this job? And if you've not done it, you won't realise, and you'll know exactly what I mean. Yeah. There's no medium. You're either having a dead good day or you're having a shit day. There's no in between. And and I. <laughs> I. People always say, you always talk about, you remember the bad stuff, don't yeah, you? If you yeah. have five good days, yeah. all you know is you've had five good days yeah. for whatever reason. Nothing's kicked off. You've had a good time. People have been out. You've been chatting. Yeah. Time's gone well. You've worked with people you like. Yeah. You've worked with managers you like. Yeah. They're good days. You can have five of them, and then you have a shit day, and you forget all about it, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you did. See, I, I will say quite definitely, I enjoyed my time yeah. working in the private sector. Uh, first two years were probably the best, working with young offenders. Uh, there was stuff happening all the time, new stuff happening. Um, very challenging, but, you know, that sort of brought the best out in me, where, sadly, some people, it brings 
the it's worst out, do not it? Yeah. So, um, would you go back into that job now? I can't at a minute. <laughs> you could, you could. But, uh, yeah, I would. Um, but I'd, I'd go public. And would you still like to go and work public prison? Do you know what it is? You know, over the last, obviously, you know, I've changed jobs and everything like yeah. that. Over the last couple of months, I've had a complete change of what I want to do in life. Okay. For the better, I think. Yeah, but you're still young, so. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. But it's not even a thought for me. So, what I thought I wanted to do my entire life, don't want to do it no more. I just want to do something completely different that I thought I would like the job I'm doing now. Never thought I'd do it. Yep. Never thought I'd be doing anything like that. Yeah. And I love it. And I ain't even properly started yet, and I love it. There you go. So, you see, you see, for me, you don't, you don't have to have a career path. You don't, you know, it can change. Things yeah. can change. Yeah. You try something new. Um, if you're in charge of prison service recruitment right now, how how would you improve it? You know, how how are you going to get people with life experiences to start coming back and applying for the job? And that's private and public sector. How? You know, it, it's very young people and mostly lasses that are applying for a job. How how do you get, you know, people, family people, you know, the sort of people that, that really they need? I think I'm just looking after them. Because I, I don't, I, like, the, the money, like, I think where I used to work, I talked to a couple of people over there, I think it's gone up to, like, over 30,000. Now, you do a 40-hour week, but that's 40 hours averaged over, say, 20 weeks. So yeah. some weeks you, you might work, like, two days. Yeah. Some weeks you might work four you know, and then you do like a full week and night, so you get a full week off. You know, yeah. you get like 25, 30 days holiday, whatever. So the benefits in that respect, so like your holiday, your actual time working, and the pay, it's not actually not too bad for what you have to do, because, you know, yeah, but you, 80% I, of the time, you just sat around drinking brews anyway, aren't you? Well, listen, so... But it, it, for me, you just got to look after people. Well, you hold get, on. I weren't sat around. Weren't you? No, 80% of the time. I tell you what... When I used to work on K-Wing, you'd be like spitting feathers at the end of the day. You'd be lucky if you got a brew. I'll tell you. Don't be telling people yeah. that. So we never had a landing with 200 prisoners there. That, that is a task in itself, that. That seems like a big shift. Yeah, over three landings yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. So, um, you see, for me, the job ain't attractive because, no. and again, you know, I might be responsible, but a lot of people who follow me or... Watched the channel and gone on to do that job, mm. but like somebody just said, Sam, I, I was thoroughly prepared for, you know, I, I knew what to go in or I had an expectation. Yeah. Whereas, I think prison service training or whatever or what people tell you is not is not real. Yeah, the training as well. I mean, doing like well, I don't know how long it is now. Say twelve weeks. Doing like well, so you got your five days for your CNR. Yep. You probably do two weeks of shadowing. So yep. that's nine weeks you're sat in a classroom. Yeah, it's boring, isn't it? it? What, but it's, yeah, it's boring, but it's also like, it's not teaching nothing. I, I've seen some people Correct. come on come on the courses, you know, ex-squaddies, you know, people that have been about yeah. and, you know, got experience, that good experience that will make a difference. Yeah. And they leave within that 12-week training period because they just think it's absolute bollocks, yeah. which it is. It is, it is. Which it is. I've, so I've, always, said, that, yeah. I've always said, do you see an R? Maybe stick a, a couple of weeks on top of that. Yeah. Put somebody in the jail, following somebody round for their other six, seven, eight weeks or whatever. Yeah, that is yeah. the best way yeah. to learn the job. That yeah. for me. Um, but it's like you. It's like engineering. You want to do twelve weeks training, do a week using tools, and then do eleven weeks watching. Well, the, the, tools, thing is, the thing is about engineering. <coughs> if, if I went for a job, I was expected I could do that job, yeah. and I was qualified for it. Unlike prison officers, which. Yeah. Yeah, I I understand people, you know, there were some people who took longer to take for that job. Might have taken them a couple of years, and then they were amazing officers. Yeah. you know, people had ripped them. Some people never did, but for me, yeah, they definitely they they need to look how how they're putting it out there because yeah. a lot of negativity, yeah, in there. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I might be responsible for some of that. However, I always say yeah, you're, you're only telling you're only telling your story, aren't you? you it know is, what I mean, yeah. you're not you're not just. Um, I don't know. Well, I'm just saying it as yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm just saying it as it You're is. You're not trying to disgrace the service or anything like that. You're just saying it, what it even though it is fucking disgraceful at times. You, you're just telling a story. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It is, yeah. The whole criminal justice is a bit of a joke, but I think all of it is suffering from recruitment. They can't yeah. recruit people. 
and you know they need to get away from all this app apprenticeship degree bollocks crap yeah what you need <laughs> is normal people with life experiences yeah. if you say to someone oh we'll do do an apprenticeship and you can get a degree they're gonna get that they're gonna think yeah thank you very much then they're gone yeah aren't they yeah you yeah. need people to come in the job and stay in the job yeah? It's getting harder though, isn't it? It is getting harder. We're going to leave it there. Do you know what? I've enjoyed that little question and answer. Um, we're going to do a full story. We already did one video, but um, <laughs> we'll take the audio from that and we'll upload it to Spotify and the like. Right, guys, if you want to come on the channel, you know, drop me an email. If you can't, you know, do that, get someone to do it for you. Uh, if you want to tell part of your story or anything, if you've got a story to tell, get in touch. What we calling you for the video title? <laughs> you can't be anonymous. Uh, 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 Sam, thanks, screw. Sam, <laughs> what a fantastic <laughs> name. Sam, thank you very much. Good to see you again, Jobs mate. are good in. I'll see you.